Babylon. Should have called it Babylon. I'll, uh, I'll see myself out. Babylon is a 2023 movie directed by Damien Chazelle, starring Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, Diego Calva, and Joanne Adepo. At least, those are the four characters that we primarily follow in the movie. But before we get into the, the characters and their journey throughout old Hollywood transitioning into new Hollywood, there is an intro to this movie that we... We just have to go over. So, when I said in my previous review, yeah, I've seen that review, right? Of Smile. The one where I said that an 18 has to justify its 18. You know, some violence, blood, action, nudity. Well, Babylon probably, probably didn't. Heard that and went, yeah, hold my, uh, hold my martini. And, oh, Babylon starts with a Manny, which is uh, Diego's character, trying to get an elephant up a hill, uh, which is in the 20s silent movie era. Because the elephant is the showpiece or end piece of a party, and uh, that party is uh, fucking insane, and it's amazing. We see Margot Robbie's character, Nelly. Nelly. <laughs> So for someone whose entire social skills is 90% based up from either South Park quotes, Family Guy quotes, or American Dad quotes, every time I heard Nelly, I kept thinking of Stu Griffin on stage going, the, actually, the award actually goes to Nelly. Nelly. <laughs> Nelly manages to get into the party because Manny helps her into the party. And they do a little scene together where they, Manny does a quote for the first time and she basically outlines her entire purpose. I want to be a star, because I am a star, and I'll do anything I can to be a star. It's not what you know, it's who you know, crash the parties, etc. Bradolf Pitler is coming out of the car with his uh, wife, ex-wife, because he keeps talking Italian. And Sydney is at this party because he is a musician, and he plays the trumpet. So, there's our four characters. Of course, there are uh, uh, other characters around, but the movie does primarily focus on these characters and their stories. <laughs> The elephant manages to get up the hill after shitting all over a guy. A lot of people have mentioned that the elephant shits on a guy. Well, the elephant shits on a guy. Have I said that enough? I hope so. The party goes on and we just see all types of shit. Just earning that 18 rating. We see a guy getting pissed on. He then later, I think, kills that girl. Or at least lets, gets her OD'd. We, <laughs> we see a lot of fucking... A lot of nudity, but it's diverse nudity. Not only do we see tits, we also see ass, cock, vagina. It's just a fucking cocktail of absolute depravity. And quite honestly, if there are parties going, out, going on out there, I want an invite. As the party gets wilder and crazier, the people organising the party realise that the girl that's either OD'd or dead because of the fatty arbuckle guy that got peed on and had too much fun with her is actually due to film in a silent film the next day. So they need to pick someone, and Margot Robbie's character is the craziest above the crazies. She's selected. So that's her ticket into the film set. Bradolf Pitler is already an established star. When he goes in, everybody recognises him. He manages to fuck a waiter. Manny ends up having to take Bradolf Pitler home. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna stop saying Bradolf Pitler. I, 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 you know, I've seen Borat, but I've never seen the full length Bruno. But I can't, get, <laughs> can't get the interview out of the, my head when Bruno refers to Brad Pitt as Brad of Pitler and Mel Gibson as the Führer. It's stuck, but I will do my best to just say Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's character Jack and um, Diego's character Manny, they kind of have a connection. Jack genuinely, Brad Pitt's Jack character's Jack, genuinely just seems to quite like Manny, and so there's Manny's way into the, the film set as well. And Sidney, is, he's kind of around because his music appears in these movies as well as being an entertainer at parties, so he's just kind of always working, but he's homing in his craft. Back in the day, the music wasn't focused on, although in the movie, 
because there wasn't spoken dialogue, it was all in the cards, you would be watching the actor, but you would be listening to the music. So he's basically homing in his craft. So now we have the ending, or at least that's how they all get onto the film set. But <laughs> there has to be a distraction because they have to get the girl who's either OD'd or dead out of the party. Key elephant <laughs> just storms in. <laughs> I don't know if anyone was trampled or not, but my God, what an ending to a party. Margot Robbie finds out that she's going to be on set. She's absolutely happy. Manny doesn't know this. Uh, doesn't know that he's going to be on set at this point. He just has to take Brad, Brad Pitt home. And what she does, Brad Pitt has a beautiful mansion. And he strips off his like, underwear, his socks. He's got like, this brace suspender things on his socks. So good luck. Brad Pitt loves acting. He thinks that it is an art. And we see his kind of passion come out in a kind of drunk ramble. Until he falls <laughs> off the roof or bouncing off the roof and into the pool. But when he wakes up the next day, that's when Manny realises he's made it into the inner circle. So the seeds have been sown for our four characters to now join the last days of the old Hollywood and transition into new Hollywood. So they're all in the film set. And this is where the story really takes off. And it's it's almost like they're all driving in the same motorway, but they're all in different lanes. But every now and then they'll, they'll intersect. They come in and out of each other's lives as they are affected by the transition of Hollywood. There is also like a theme in the background of singing in the rain. But that does come at the end, almost full circle. But it's three hours to get there. There is an argument to be made that movies should be 90 minutes to 2 hours at most. But for me, movies like The Wolf of Wall Street, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, The Batman. But if a movie can hold your attention for so long, I'm absolutely fine with it. In fact, if it's an empty or quiet cinema, then I'm absolutely fine sitting there being in the story. And because this is all about the behind the scenes of Hollywood... Something I hopefully one day would like to see. I don't know. I'm an actor. <laughs> but I am just absolutely focused and I absolutely love seeing the behind the scenes stuff. So that to me is absolutely, that that's great to me because I, I want to just get engrossed in that. So I can see if it's going at 100 miles an hour constantly and it's you're maybe not too bothered on the ins and outs of how movies are made in Hollywood, then yeah, it could be sort of, hard to sit through. So I can understand that a little bit. Let's break the story down now though. We have Jack, Nelly, Manny, forgot his name, and Sydney. And like you say, they're all in the highway of Hollywood. Let's talk about them a little bit. I think let's begin with Jack. And just on that as well, there's a point where they all do come together for one kind of final scene before they're respective individual ends so what i'll do is at this point i will break it down into all four other stories up until that end point and then we'll talk about the overall conclusion so jack he is a respected silent film actor who <laughs> gets uh, div married divorced married divorced constantly he's flawed but the, his one true love is acting, being on set. As soon as he's in front of that camera, that's when he can truly shine. It seems like any time out with being on camera, he struggles. It's almost like the, the person that he is is the person that he doesn't want to play. He wants to play anyone else. But Jack struggles with the transition from silent movie star to sound and colour movie star. In fact, he struggles so much that he ends up getting put in movies that really aren't doing well. They know it's not going to do well. So they hire Jack, who's an old name, a reliable name, or at least a name that people know, to go and do a rush job on it. And they can at least sell it using Jack's name. Because Jack's kind of a prop at this point. But at the same time, he lives in a fuck-off mansion, he goes to crazy parties, and he's got the charisma to constantly get himself married, or engaged, married, and then divorced. Cycle continues. Up until the point where he realises that the, the game's sort of up for him. He's no longer a movie star, he's a movie prop, in which case that spark is sort of lost. 
Not just that, he loses his best friend before that. And his best friend throughout the the, the whole movie is constantly track chasing girls, getting rejected, and he's suicidal at the beginning. But that's always played off as a laugh. But actually, yeah, the joke has a punchline. So where we see Jack at the beginning is him just coming off his peak. And then where we leave Jack, he is at his lowest. And although he, he, he does have a wife, and he, the thing that kept him going, being in front of the camera, being taken as a serious film star of the silent era, that's lost. And he can't really, he can't really deal with that, unfortunately, on his own. He can have all the fame, he can have all the friends, but that one thing that gets taken away from him, it's too much, and on top of the fact that he lost his best friend, which was a shoulder that he clearly needed, which is nice, to be fair, reading through, reading along the lines, that that friendship was something very special that directly affected him. In fact, during the, the scene where he finds out that his friend died, there is a, actually a really good scene where his, his latest wife and his last wife is kind of downplaying what being a movie star is, a Hollywood movie star, because she comes from the arts, she comes from the kind of higher up society and they kind of look down. Which is interesting, you can have a big fuck off mansion and everything you ever want and yet you're still somewhere in the pecking order, not at the top. Someone can still look down on you. He kind of goes into a, a speech about how it, it is still art, you're still playing something, you can still have an effect on someone. So, get off your fucking high horse. Quite like that. So... There's Jack's kind of journey so far up until the point. Let's talk about Nelly. I'm going to stop saying the name like Nelly because it's probably not even close to Stuart Griffin. Nelly comes across as selfish and self-centered. It's all about her. She already is a star in her own head, but she wants to prove that to the world. And my God, she does. The scene that she's supposed to be in, she's just supposed to be some bimbo that dances with no real passion. She's just supposed to flirt with, with, with some bar pa patrons and that's it however this is Margot Robbie playing Nelly and she can act the director absolutely recognises that and she even upstages the actor that they had in the scene with her she can cry on cue she can flirt she can dance she can flash her tit it's weird because we just came from a, 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 a section of the movie that had all of that and yet when Margot Robbie does it, it's so much better. Let's not go into a conversation about this. Margot Robbie completely outstages uh, the, the actor. She completely wows the director. And the movie comes out and, my God, she has risen to stardom. She, she's done the things she wants to do. But things change right after it. So she sees the silent movie. The people loved it. But now, as she becomes an actor... She's in a completely different situation because where they were at filming the, the silent movies was a big fucking lot with different sets and they were all being filmed at the once. It looked less like a movie set and more like a fucking war zone. There are people dying. <laughs> a guy has a fucking pole in his chest. <laughs> and and <laughs> they, they look over the guy and go, yeah, he, he did have a bit of a drinking problem. Yeah, drink, that was the problem. Not the big fucking pole in his chest. It was a fucking can of Budweiser that threw it. This movie has a, a, a weird thing where people will die and they'll go, yep, that happened, moving on. Very different because now Margot Robbie's no longer in that crazy world. It's an, a changing and adapting world and she needs to change and adapt with it. But Margot Robbie has the skills, or Nelly has the skills. She's a great actor. She can... Say her lines convincingly, she can ad lib, she can improvise, she can do all the things that most can't. Problem is, the setting is completely different. Now there is a sound guy up in the heavens, there's a camera guy in a sweat box, and it's becoming a lot more well, it's becoming a lot more like Hollywood that we see the producers on there, he's got the suit on. It's starting to become a business and things need to be in its place for things to work. But she She's fine. She she does it, and she's main. She maintains the the actor role. However, the problem is she is alone. 
her dad, who's the guy, I can't remember the actor's name, but he's, he's in the music video, Mr. Brightside by the Killers, he's in the music video. Her dad is basically a, a faux salesman, he's a scam artist, and it, it genuinely does seem like he's only out for him. Margot Robbie makes him her manager, mainly just because she has no one else. Margot Robbie's mum, or Nellie's mum, is in a mental hospital, so there is there is a lot of there's a lot of things happening in Nellie's head that I don't even think she re realizes because see, the excess, the drinking, the gambling, well, all that might actually come and bite her in the ass later on. She continues as the the actor, and she has all this fame, but. With all the paparazzi going around her, like I said, all those things that have issues, they don't go away. In fact, they're being given a lot of time to be inflated because she now has more money. She has some free time and access to all of that stuff. She can't escape her demons. And in fact, her de the demons have basically been given free access to her because she can indulge and no one's really there to stop her. She fights a rattlesnake after trying to get her dad to do it. So... I think at this point she was like, nah, fuck you dad, it's time you uh, you got bit off a rattlesnake and out of my fucking life. The dad passes out unfortunately, so he can. So she does, and she gets bit in the neck in all oh, my days. Snakes don't bother me, but it's, it's something else. So there's a, a Chinese woman who is, she attends the parties and she's kind of like a level head. Well, she has a thing for Nelly. And she cuts the snake's head off with a knife, pretty cool. And then we see the, we see what the, the snake has done to her. We can see the kind of blood and a little bit of or venom coming out of her neck. All of that's fine to me. I don't mind. I watch Terrifier, wait, and I, I, watching the girl get sawn in half, gore doesn't bother me. But what did bother me was the slurping sound effect of... The China, I can't remember the, the, the actor's name, the character's name, I do apologise. But the slurping sound of her sucking the blood and venom out of the neck. If they'd done that at least two, one or two more times, the person in front was going to have a vomit shower. Yeah, and they two end up going into a relationship. There's a bit of a dip and then Manny, who does become a producer, tries to build her back up. But in doing that, because everything's ran like a, biz a business now, there are sensibilities and a gay relationship is, is something that can't happen. So he splits it up. So when I say there was no one, there wasn't anyone until the, she found her partner. But the way that the world looked at things back then was limiting. And so the support that she did have from her lesbian partner was ripped away from her by Manny and she started to spiral just as he was trying to use the business to build her back up but because she didn't have that emotional support Manny can't do it and the business can't do it let's get on to Manny as mentioned Manny basically was doing a lot of work around and he managed to get his way in by Brad Pitt and on the set he is the hero of the day the 20s set the silent movie set because the cameras all break because like I said it's a fucking war zone Manage, Man Manny manages to get another camera steal an ambulance gets back there and they manage to film the shot and the movie is complete they're all happy Manny pretty much throughout the movie is just building a lot of the changes and transitions from the old Hollywood to the new Hollywood Manny seems to be right in the centre of that so he seems to be building things up that's, he's very business centric. In fact, he's, like I said, he, when Nelly finally kind of gets that drop, he's the one that wants to bring her back. Manny is completely in love with Nelly. But what he didn't realise that he'd done was he took the one thing that could have kept or potentially saved Nelly away and he thought he could save her himself. Not the case. Nelly... And Manny do eventually come back together, but that's let's get let's get to that. We'll get to that, I promise. Because the next character that we really need to follow is Sydney. Sydney is a black trumpeter. 
I hope I'm, I hope I've got that right because I'm going to say trumpet a lot, and he is recognised again. He's he's literally honing his craft throughout the beginning of the movie. He's at the party plane. He's at the film set plane, and we even see that when he goes home, he's only going home to rest. So so that it gets him to the next job that he has to do, but he's damn good at it. And as Manny's starting to kind of find his way in, find his feet and, and, and get a little bit of power, Sydney and Manny have a conversation which fuels basically Sydney's break and the first music video. With Manny, Manny then starts to think, well, can we not expand? The music's already in the movie, but what have we focused on the music? Yes, it came from Sydney. It was his idea. But Manny was in the position to do something. And so... Not only did the transition of, of movies from silent to sound and in, 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 uh, in colour kind of happen because Manny was, his part, was a part of the producers making those changes, but also music videos. Like, Manny gave us music videos, which is awesome. And Sydney gets a brand new life. It's no longer about going from one show to another with a brief sleep on two chairs. And now he actually he has a mansion. He has a car. He is... So he believes he is celebrated until he is not. <clears throat> because this is still very early Hollywood. Gay relationships are frowned upon and black musicians, actors, they are seen as lesser. In fact, almost everyone is used by Hollywood. They believe they are using Hollywood to fulfil their dreams, what they're actually doing is being meat for the Hollywood meat grinder. And because everybody wants the fame, they see it, it's advertised to them, it's it's the dream. They walk into the meat grinder, but no one comes out of the meat grinder. Completely the same. So now we have the scene where they all come back together. Right. Everything's sort of changed. Now, the Hollywood movie industry is exactly that. It's an industry. It's going to be ran more like a business and they need people to fund the business. The technology is getting more and more expensive. Advertisements are coming in. So they need money. And where are they going to get the money from? The elite. So Sydney is sitting on the couch. People are talking down to him. Jack, who has just lost his friend, has just done his first major picture in the new Hollywood set and it bombed and he's not feeling great so it's almost like a double hit for him. Nobody gives a fuck about the fact he just lost his friend but they all care about the fact that he's now confirmed to have lost his pedestal and he, he loses his shit. This is at the point where Manny is trying to get funding as a producer so that he can go forward with this new vision and create this new Hollywood and he's trying to bring Nelly up with him but she is just not the elite and so within this this entire scene all four of our characters kind of break away and they are now straight to their end Nelly does it the best to be fair she tells a, a joke about a bear and a rabbit the bear uses the rabbit to wipe shit but this, this woman that she's speaking with is wearing a rabbit. So she takes the rabbit and then she goes and gorges herself on some food, which ends up on her being sick on one of the uh, arseholes of the party. Obviously, Manny is upset about this because it's endangered his funding. So now this is pretty much the end of the, the road. This, this is the final... This is the final, this is the final countdown. I don't like that. But anyway, this is the end. This is the beginning of the end. Jack, who in realisation that the thing that gave him that spark is now gone, can't live without it. He does have a wife, but it's not enough. And he kills himself. Nelly is somewhat overcome with her demons. She goes gambling and she gambles from the people that you really shouldn't be gambling with. But she comes back to Manny. Manny 
tries to help. Now, they're being spoken down to, he goes on set and he has to wear blackface. He's done. And I hope that he lived a good life. Now, the movie sort of, so the movie sort of bottlenecks at this point, where we are focused on Manny trying to fix Nelly's gambling debt. They get a guy called The Count, who is a drug dealer on set that dresses like Count Dracula. Don't question it, I didn't. And he gets 85 grand of prop money. But he doesn't tell them that yet. And they go to Toby Maguire's house, who plays just the most off-putting, creepy guy. This movie started out on a big sex orgy party where I wanted to be and then towards the end takes us to a dungeon fucking creepy club with just horrible shit going on. A guy eating live rats. And so Toby Maguire, I think he was being nice. All of this because you know the money's fake, right? You know the money's fake. But Toby Maguire didn't know that and this, that was him being nice. Could you imagine what it'd be like if he was just really pissed off, like if he knew that that money was fake when he was sitting at the weed club? I genuinely think he would have tried to fucking eat their faces. Either way, awesome to see Tobey Maguire again. Um, it awesome to see him just play just a creepy character with a creepy dungeon with a crocodile in it. But yeah, they in turn try and shoot and kill Manny and Manny has to leave with Nelly. And at this point, Nelly shows that it's just all for her. She's always had to look out for herself and so, yeah. Manny's doing his best to try and get her to Mexico with the Count and she's kind of doing her best to, well, she has accepted her fate. Manny and the Count go to the Count. Hitman comes in, but he lets Manny go. And I, I'm going to be honest, I, I was hoping so. The Count, I didn't really care. I mean, if he's really Count Dracula, then a couple of gunshots would be fine as long as it didn't hit his heart. Nelly and Manny, they don't happen. Nelly leaves in the middle of the night and the meat grinder of Hollywood, the star at one point, is reduced to a found body uh, in a bottom of a newspaper. Manny, however, leaves... Hollywood finds his, finds another way, finds another life, gets another wife, and has a kid, and he revisits Hollywood, now looking closer to what we know Hollywood as today, he goes to the cinema, he sees uh, Singing in the Rain, and he is affected by a lot of the change that he helped drive, a lot of the things he was early a part of, a lot of things that he saw be done for the first time he sees being recreated. They may have been a joke at the time, but they're still being used. But it's still a meat grinder. But it continues. And we all watch it. We're all consuming it. The cycle repeats. Then there's a whole big colour thing. Look, the last kind of bit, when Manny's in the cinema, there's a slight overindulgence. I get where they're coming from. Creativity, Hollywood, we're all part of the experience, but it went on a bit too long, to be honest with you. But for a three hour long movie, for it to be right at the end when I'm like, right, okay, come on, fuck now. The stories have already been told, this is the wrap up, and if the wrap up takes a little long, would well, you know what, 99% of the movie I fucking loved. So if you're going to have that 1% where it's a little bit overindulgence, I have at it, have at it. This movie comes out, I'm buying it. So, yeah, 100%. What a, it was a good movie. I really enjoyed it. I think it's probably up for a couple of Oscars. Um, but, yeah, awesome. That is the end of my review on Babylon. I don't even know that you can call it a review. It's more about me talking about the movie being as animated as possible. But hopefully, if you got this far, thank you. I do have other shit going on on the channel. So, if you do want to check that out, please do. Like I say, 2023 is me trying something new. Hope you enjoyed. Marco Robbie Flash in this movie. I'm to watch The Wolf of Wall Street.